Hello everyone, thank you for joining this spaces today. Uh, we have D5 Builder with us today and we are going to uh, speak with them regarding different uh, things that they are doing in D5 space and how they are making this a better space. We will just invite them real quick onto uh, Spaces as speaker. Uh, meanwhile, I would, I would like to share about what we do at Metapath. So Metapath is a Web3 aggregator. We aggregate NFTs, uh, tokens. Uh, uh, yeah, we can hear you. How are you? Good, good. What about you? Yeah, I'm good as well. I was just telling audience about Metapath and what we do. And then I think we can dive into the spaces. Uh, I think till then, a few more people will join as well. Sure. Sounds good. Yeah, awesome. So, yeah, so we uh, aggregate NFTs, gaming assets, metaverse assets, tokens, all at one place. We have a swap. We have anatomic swap where you can swap between different uh, 30 different blockchains and over 400 different uh, cryptocurrencies with, e with each other. And we also have uh, NFT marketplace where you can buy NFTs from six different chains with any cryptocurrencies from over uh, from, from 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 over 400 different cryptocurrencies. So let's say if you want to buy a board ape yacht uh, punk, you can buy uh, a board ape yacht club NFT. You can buy that with Solana or any other token that you hold without any issues. We have uh, AI products as well. So if you go on to our website, you can find NFT collection as per your liking or as per your preference. Uh, you, if you are a ChatGPT premium user, you can use Metapath plugin to, uh, to uh, do analysis of Web3 market, of NFT market. You can ask questions like uh, what kind of NFT has the highest trading volume in last six months and lowest flow price or which NFTs have uh, a trading volume increased uh, by 200% in last one month. We have seen a lot of trading increase, uh, trading volume increase in last uh, one, two months. So you can ask that sort of uh, that sorts of questions. So if you want to try it out, go to path.finance, P-A-T-H dot F-I-N-A-N-C-E or uh, metapath.me m a t e uh, m a t a p a t h dot m e. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for uh, everyone for joining the spaces. Yeah, so let's get into the spaces. Hey there, how are you? Hey hey, I'm good. I'm good, my friend. What it's, about you? Yeah, it's uh, really good to have you over here. Uh, we are really happy to have DeFi Builder and uh, you over here. Uh, so before we dive into the spaces, can you please give brief introduction of yours? Uh, what is your background and how did you arrive into the web space? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Daniel and I'm the CEO of DeFi Builder. Uh, in the past, uh, before I joined the blockchain, I worked a lot in uh, startups um, and uh, getting new technology off the ground in Web2. Uh, we worked a lot as a consultancy firm as well, and uh, we had a software house. And in uh, 2020, we decided to move uh, exclusively to the blockchain because uh, we saw a very good opportunity with DeFi. And it was a new challenge and uh, something interesting that our team can get into and uh, expand their knowledge. Uh, it obviously proved uh, very challenging because uh, it was a uh, completely new coding languages, completely new logics, and it was much more complex than anything else we did in Web2. But uh, we managed to learn a lot over the past few years, and uh, we're at a quite good point right now with our team and uh, the ideas that we have and things that we're trying to develop. Yeah, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, we are really excited to have you here. Uh, I, I personally am really interested in DeFi and how DeFi can do various things for the world. Uh, now, can you give, uh, so, you know, from DeFi Builder, like the name DeFi Builder, I do get a sense of uh, what the project is about. It's, it's about building DeFi. Uh, but yeah, can you give a more introduction of uh, DeFi Builder and what is your primary mission in this uh, decentralized finance space? Yeah, sure. 
So uh, yeah, whenever we launch projects, a lot of people will try to come up with very interesting names that are not related to the service. We're usually pretty straight to the point. So DeFi Builder is a DeFi Builder. Uh, the way that it works is that uh, at the moment, we have uh, two various types of services on our platform. On one side, we have a, a modular builder, uh, which allows the users to go through a step-by-step -step process where they can set up various uh, DeFi modules. And uh, by DeFi modules, I mean tokens, DXs, farms, uh, launchpad protocols, lending and borrowing protocols, and so on. So uh, most of the core uh, tools that you would see on uh, on most blockchains nowadays. Um, the reason we're doing this is because uh, when we first entered the market, as I said, we struggled a lot with the tech side of DeFi, and it took us a very long time and a lot of money to build a, a solid development team that can create anything for us. So uh, we thought, what better way to use our coding library and knowledge so far than to make a service that can help the next wave of entrepreneurs to join the market. Um, so that's on the modular builder side. And uh, right now we're also working a lot on AI services. Uh, and that's uh, also a product for non-tech users, but it could also be very useful for developers because uh, our uh, tools allow users to generate smart contracts from uh, prompts. Uh, so again, we have some uh, modules for that as well that they can get started with, and then they can customize uh, the contracts through prompts. And uh, at the moment, we support tokens, DXs, NFTs, launchpads, I believe, uh, and uh, a few other things. Um, along with uh, contract generation, we also have uh, building and testing of the contract to make sure that everything is deployable. And uh, at that point, the developer could decide to just copy paste the contract and then do some manual work on it before they uh, deploy it. Or they can move on with our platform and uh, do a security test on it as well because we have a trained uh, AI model that uh, checks. Hey, I think we just lost you there. Generation for uh, these contracts. Uh, so through smart contract ABIs will allow users to generate a front end for the contract so they can have a full product without having to code anything. Uh, that's kind of what uh, we're doing with the project. Hopefully, I explained it well enough. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good explanation. Now, uh, see, uh, so uh, uh, the one word really sticked out to me, and it is customizable. As someone who has built a few websites and who has used some, you know, website building tools like, you know, sh uh, sh uh, Shopify and uh, WordPress and GoDaddy and all that stuff. I know, you know, customization is really important when you are trying to build a product. And if 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 a modular uh, blocks don't offer a good level of customization, they, uh, that can really be a trouble when a, a protocol is trying to grow and things like that. So, what level of customization do uh, do you offer with DeFi Builder when building uh, DeFi protocols and applications? And uh, uh, now, when you are build, uh, when you are offering uh, customizations, uh, how do you make sure that they are user friendly and they are secure and things like that? Yeah, sure. So, uh, as far as the modular builder goes, um, right now we have front end customization. And uh, we allow users to do a few simple things right now since we are still in an MVP stage. Uh, but essentially, we have various uh, templates that they can use for, uh, for the modules. So uh, if they're launching a farming protocol through us, for example, they could pick from uh, around three or four various templates for the headers, for uh, the center of the application, and for the footers. Uh, they can customize uh, graphical assets, colors, fonts, uh, so they can make their platform a little bit more of their own uh, style. And obviously, in the future, we will add more and more customization. The end goal would be to have a more drag and drop type of system and uh, something that's really, really similar to Shopify or WordPress. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll keep building towards that. And uh, another type of customization that we have, again, is with the AI services. Uh, so uh, there, it's more tech customization on the smart contract side. Uh, but there, the potential is literally endless. Uh, because it's just based on the user's prompts and we're getting incredible results with the amount of code and complexity of code that we can generate through it. Uh, so that's another level of customization. And hopefully for the AI uh, front-end generation, we'll be able to do something similar, but uh, this will be in the next few months. 
Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for putting that out there. You know, uh, I think you mentioned uh, different modules available. Can you just please, uh, you know, share different modules available with DeFi Builder and uh, what kind of things you, uh, users or developers can do with those modules? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, as far as modules that we support right now, we have uh, completely working. We have tokens, DXs, uh, yield farms, so uh, standard LP farms, locked farms, uh, partner pools, for example, like single staking asset pools. Uh, we have uh, NFT integrations into farms, uh, so uh, users would be able to add the uh, NFT staking to their farms. Uh, they can add the uh, referral systems on their platform uh, and uh, launch pads. And uh, on the AI side, we have uh, all of this stuff, but we also have uh, NFTs. So uh, they could generate NFT contracts. Um, some of the things that we'll do down the line is uh, having an NFT builder as well, uh, NFT minting page, and uh, an NFT marketplace deployer too. So uh, they can do all of their NFT customization, graphical work, collection setup, JSON files, everything through our platform. Uh, but it will be a little bit later down the line. And obviously it's stuff that requires a lot of work. Awesome, thank you so much. Now, uh, uh, we have, you know, there are these uh, modular blocks that people can use to build uh, DeFi application. Uh, I think I think the next question or the next fair question would be what blockchain networks are supported uh, by DeFi Builder and uh, how are you planning to expand that? I, I mean, instead of bl uh, blockchain networks, if, if, if I ask what kind of uh, coding languages do you support uh, with uh, DeFi Builder? Sure. Uh, so at the moment, uh, as far as coding languages go, we support Solidity and Rust. And uh, for some specific blockchains like Near, for example, we also uh, support JS. Um, but that's a very specific case. In general, uh, the, the best work we've done so far is on uh, EVM chains, so Solidity, uh, because it's our bread and butter and what we've worked on uh, mostly in the past. And um, uh, yeah, so... Uh, at the moment, the chains that we support are uh, uh, some of the top tier ones, but we're trying to close uh, some marketing agreements uh, with uh, with them so we can have a, a little bit of a marketing campaign that goes along with this. Um, and uh, some of the chains that we're actively supporting are partner ones that we've already talked to. So we have uh, Arthera, Zeta Chain, um, we have Lightlink, uh, we have, uh, we're gonna have Reef very soon. Uh, and uh, we've just integrated Linea and Scroll into it as well. Uh, so there's quite a few chains. Uh, Multiverse X is another one since we've participated in uh, one of their hackathons and one. And uh, we're in touch with their team and we want to keep updating it so uh, so we can have a little bit more feedback from the Multiverse X team and see if we can have some, uh, uh, some potential partnership with them. And uh, in the future, uh, since we have the Multiverse X side, uh, we will also be supporting Solana, and uh, some other Rust chains. But uh, mainly, I think we will try to keep it a little bit exclusive. So uh, so hopefully we can get some partnerships with blockchains and have an exchange of quality in between uh, both sides. Uh, and uh, we've done a pretty good job right now. Just uh, in the past week, uh, we've managed to get in contact with uh, Polygon, with uh, ZK Sync, and uh, with Linea. So uh, we're definitely taking steps in the right direction to where I think we will be eventually showcased in, uh, in the eyes of a lot of people around the blockchain. But uh, we won't just drop every single chain on the platform. We'll probably have slow integrations with uh, with each one of them. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that sounds, uh, sounds really good. Uh, you know, s such big networks can really uh, help you uh, go to a lot of developers, help you... Uh, uh, meet a lot of new developers and developer teams. So that would be really, really cool to just uh, have uh, uh, such uh, such big blockchain partners. Uh, now, uh, you know, have you tried to look into layer, you know, partnering up with layer zero, like, you know, Cosmos or Polkadot, where there are lots of uh, para chains or different blockchains and under, under it like cosmos has like so many blockchains under it uh, pulgadot has around 
I think uh, so on Kusama there is like 70 80 para chains and on Polkadot there are like uh, 40 50 blockchains para chains so once you build something for them I think that would just then all all of those chain, chain, uh, chains and all of their developers can use it I think that would be uh, that might be a good strategy so have you tried to look into uh, going towards this uh, layer zero chains uh, yeah, that would that would be an option as well. Um, we have been looking into Cosmos, and my uh, my development team is studying it now to see how uh, easy or hard integration might be onto our platform. Uh, the only thing is, if if on the tech side it takes too long, uh, it's probably better to do it a second time uh, so we can focus on the chains that and languages that we're already working with. Uh, but Cosmos could definitely be a really interesting one and a very large ecosystem that. Uh, we can take advantage of and uh, that we can expand in very well. Uh, I, I definitely agree. Awesome. Thank you so much for, you know, answering that. Uh, now, uh, uh, when, uh, you know, when we are building something DeFi and we are, there is lots of money involved, uh, uh, security becomes one of the very important measure. So, how do you first of all make sure the modules that you're building are secure and then uh, different projects who are using your modules to build their applications they are secure as well their smart contracts are uh, secure as well so how do you maintain that level of security uh, and, and and things like that yeah sure so there's uh, there's a few sides uh, to this definitely and uh, we have various ideas on uh, on how to manage this aspect. Obviously, there's been billions of dollars lost in 2022 through exploits. So it's uh, it's something we have to be very wary of, uh, particularly because we are going to be selling code to people. So it is important. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that for the modular builder, since the process is quite streamlined and doesn't offer... Uh, insane customization on the smart contract side, uh, you could consider it more of a forking type of system. So in that case, the worries are a lot lower because uh, it's code that we have worked with for several years. It's code uh, that we have from open Zeppelin repositories and uh, code that has been used by hundreds of projects and is completely bulletproof. Uh, and it's also code that we have spent money on to get audited by, uh, by various auditing firms in the past. From that point of view, I wouldn't see any issues that could arise. Uh, the only uh, place where we would have issues is probably with AI generation uh, because AI is not perfect. And uh, while uh, we are not using just standard GPT and asking it questions, we have a trained model that is uh, working, uh, that is being trained from various coding libraries. So the output in the end is quite solid. It's quite good. Everything is functional. Uh, but that's why we also added the building and testing mechanisms and the, the smart contract uh, auditing uh, system that we have with our trained AI model. So we can do as many checks as possible before uh, delivering the code to a user. Uh, for sure, we will still need to have some disclaimers on there and uh, would probably recommend uh, the users that generate contracts to also get a second opinion from an auditor. Uh, but uh, the end goal for me with this would be to grow a partnership with an auditing firm that could uh, check all of our modules and uh, have them constantly monitored to see if uh, there's any new exploit that has arised that may affect any of our coding databases. Uh, so that would be the end goal. For now, as an MVP and uh, the first steps into the game, I think uh, the security measures that we've taken are quite good. And uh, obviously, we will encourage users to not use contracts blindly and also hire an auditor if they know that they will be using the, the smart contracts and the protocols deployed by us for something that might move a large amount of money. Uh, so it's always good to have a second opinion on stuff like this. You can never be too secure. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, if you are building a protocol and if you are using someone else's code, you must make sure that it's... Uh, uh, 
uh, it's it's secure first of all so i think it is project's responsibility as well when they are you know using a product like this to uh, do a audit or do a security test or and, and things like that so that's uh, really good now uh, you know you have already told us about you know how you are working with different blockchains uh, and different uh, uh, layer one blockchains to just uh, uh, to reach out to their developers and networks. Uh, now, is this uh, is this a product for, let's say, someone like me who is into marketing instead of development? I have built websites using, uh, you know, no-code tools and things like that. I have built apps using no-code tools and things like that. So who is the target audience for DeFi Builder and... Uh, 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 how do you make sure that, let's say, all level of users understand uh, your product? Uh, what kind of doc documentation you create to go with that? Sure. So uh, definitely, I think the, the target audience and the one that's going to be our most successful customer will be non-tech users. So uh, not smart contract developers, not React TypeScript developers. Uh, because uh, typically they're the ones that are not really using coding tools that uh, no code tools that much. Uh, although there are exceptions for that as well. So uh, for sure, I think marketers can benefit from this a lot. And uh, just people like us that uh, three years ago had a dream of becoming a Web3 team and we had no knowledge at all, no knowledge on how liquidity works, no knowledge on how pancake swaps magic works. We had no idea about anything. But we really wanted to join the market. Uh, we understood the power of it. And uh, we understood the fact that a good idea uh, is often much better than good code in this market. So uh, there's a lot of potential for users that are talented, that are creative, and uh, that are not tech-based to use something like this to get their idea onto the market. And uh, this obviously doesn't stop them from hiring a development team in the future. So they can make more advanced customizations, so they can come up with new technical systems that don't exist. Uh, that's definitely good. But what we offer is something that can get them with their foot in the door easily with no coding knowledge and at very, very reduced costs. So no, non-tech users are definitely the, the main target. Uh, and uh, we hope to help developers as well uh, because we're implementing systems for them too. Uh, as I said, with the AI services, uh, it's a tool that could be useful for uh, developers so they don't have to write code from scratch. Uh, they can get a very good amount of customization through the prompts, and then they can start making their own modifications if they so wish. So it could be something potentially interesting for them as well. Ultimately, we're also implementing a module marketplace for our builder. Uh, and uh, in that case, we would allow third-party developers to join our, our team, essentially, at that point, our decentralized team. Uh, and they can act as developers that create new modules or fork modules from various blockchains. Any interesting emerging technology that comes out, they could sell it on our marketplace uh, and they could make some profit from that. And uh, that's one of the ways that we want to keep developers in, in our ecosystem, too. Thanks so much for that answer. Now let's talk about something that everyone wants to talk about and everyone wants to hear about AI. Uh, we have already, you know, you have already talked about uh, some things that you are doing with AI. Now, uh, so how are you using or how can uh, your end user use AI to, de uh, to develop custom DApp modules and uh, uh, how does it uh, tailor smart contracts, front ends, and you know the specific, specific requirements. So, like, what is uh, the so? What, but essentially, my question is: What are the AI features of your of your platform, and how does uh, how do they help the end user? Sure. Uh, so, when we first uh, got started with the AI services, uh, it was for a hackathon. And uh, we thought it would be a fun idea to make a code uh, generator for tokens. Uh, and uh, as always, we get too obsessed with our ideas and we keep developing them. So in the end, we realized that by training AI models, we can literally work on anything. So it would include any type of coding libraries in Web3. 
Um, and right now we have uh, somewhat core items, but they could become much more complex in the future. Uh, but for a, an easy explanation for a user, they can simply go on the platform, pick the blockchain that they want to deploy a contract on. Uh, they can pick from uh, a few uh, templates uh, of project. Uh, so they can have uh, already a base idea and the AI model knows what kind of code to work on. And then they can go crazy with the prompt that they're giving it uh, and the AI model will generate code for them. Uh, what happens next is that we have an adversarial network. So one AI model is working on generating smart contracts while the other AI model is trying to break them. So uh, we can uh, essentially figure out if there are any errors that may be inbound from the contract, uh, if there's anything that would stop the deployment process uh, or anything that is uh, broken in, uh, in logic. After that, the user can uh, audit the contract to find any vulnerabilities. Uh, sometimes contracts might have re-entrancy issues. They might have uh, certain flaws. So uh, they can take a look at that. They can download the report, read it over, and then they can uh, regenerate the contract asking for... Uh, for the various exploits to be fixed in the raw code. Uh, those are some of the things that we're doing so we can make it as intuitive as possible for them. And uh, the end game uh, that we're developing in the coming months, as I said, is a front-end generation. Uh, this is really interesting in my opinion because there you're really opening the doors to anything and everything. So letting users do code as custom as they want and uh, giving them a way to just generate front ends out of the blue, I think would be a killer feature for them. Uh, in that case, to be more specific, the way it works is that uh, uh, our AI model would be generating front ends based on uh, smart contract ABIs. So based on the functions that the contract will have, the user uh, will be able to generate a front end that is responsive to the contract functions. So uh, let's say that uh, you're deploying a DEX. Uh, basically, the, the front end would be generated based on the, on the functions of the DEX code. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. The user wouldn't have to do any coding work as always with us. Uh, and uh, we would be offering them a complete product at that point and uh, something where they can go from completely zero, having nothing to a fully deployed protocol in, in just a few minutes. Yeah, that I mean, I mean, you know, as I, I would love to go ahead and try something like this. As a, so, let's say my skills are, are, you know, marketing. I am not necessarily someone who can go out and build a pro, you know DeFi pro project or DeFi product. Maybe I can use your tools and go ahead and build some products and just, uh, you know try to market them and see. Uh, if if I can start my own business or something like that. Now, when I'm thinking something like that, the, the, the first thing or the first question that comes to my mind is, do I have 100% ownership and 100% control over the things that I'm building? Uh, or is there something going towards DeFi Builder? How, uh, you know, can you just uh, share your thoughts on that? Uh, what kind of like are, are are you guys taking a percentage of ownership or percentage of control? What kind of things you are doing over there? Yeah, sure, that's a good question and something that users should know. Um, no, we we have tried our best to not take ownership in anything. Uh, so the only thing that would probably be on our end is the hosting side of uh, of the project. Uh, and then the user could obviously just request to self-host uh, their, their project on their own AWS servers or whatever they have. That's not a problem with us. Uh, as far as the important stuff, so the smart contracts, we will have uh, zero ownership of them. So when the user is deploying the contract, they will uh, simply receive a MetaMask pop-up or whichever wallet of choice they are using. And uh, they would deploy the contract themselves. So uh, we would have absolutely no ownership over it. Uh, the only thing that we will have in the future is uh, royalties on certain aspects of the modules that the user is deploying. So uh, let's say that a user deploys a farming protocol and uh, they have deployment fees, uh, sorry, they have deposit fees when a user uh, deposits their funds into the farm. In that case, we would be taking a cut of, uh, of those deposit fees as well. Uh, but again, this would be written in code and it would be a self-sustainable process. Uh, so the smart contracts would take care of all of the work. 
and uh, we would again have absolutely no control over the contracts. Uh, so everything stays uh, with the owner. Yeah, I mean, that's really great to hear. Now, uh, I see that you are building a lot of things. You are building, uh, you know, lots of DeFi modules that can help people build their own applications. Uh, now, let's say if I'm a developer and I want to contribute my own modules to DeFi Builder, uh, is there a way for me to do that? Yeah, as I, as I said, uh, we, we will implement a module marketplace. Hopefully, that will be in uh, Q2 of 2024. Uh, and then if you are a developer and you want to join us, you think our project is interesting and you think uh, your ideas and coding knowledge could uh, be utilized for a module that a lot of people would integrate through us, uh, then you could simply sell it on our marketplace and uh, it would basically be infinite money pool for you, hopefully. <laughs> That's what we're hoping for. Uh, so yeah, definitely we will try to keep uh, implementing more things that can uh, <clears throat> that can help developers get closer to us and uh, join our ecosystem of services, so uh, so we can support them as much as possible. Yeah. So now uh, you know we uh, we talked about how a, a user or a person can use your modules, but then you also mentioned that we can host with you so that's like a service that you guys are providing uh, now what are some other services like you know so, uh, SaaS features that you are providing for uh, to make the entrepreneur's job easier yeah sure so um, essentially on the hosting side uh, we we would be able to take care of uh, the hosting of the product this would be included in the initial cost that the user is uh, is paying to to deploy their product, uh, but uh, long term uh, we will probably have to include a, a subscription model for this, uh, so we can sustain it because otherwise we would be giving free hosting to to users. Uh, and yeah, the the type of business model that we're aiming for is based on deployments and uh, subscriptions as well. So a hybrid model for uh, uh, for the user that is operating with us. Uh, if they do wish to self-host uh, their services, then that's completely okay with us. As I said, uh, it's uh, it's not a problem. And uh, yeah, everything on our platform is basically SaaS services. So from uh, the modular builder to the AI services, uh, everything is uh, is there to be sold to users. We generate it very similar, very similarly to Shopify or uh, or WordPress. Maybe you could consider it uh, similar to the plugin marketplace on uh, wordpress or uh, the one on shopify as well because they had the uh, plugins too so uh, it'll be something very similar to that yeah i mean that's really good now let's say if if, if i'm an entrepreneur and i know the uh, bull market is uh, coming very soon so i want to create a launch pad how much would that cost uh, so, you know, what are some of the costings of uh, all the services that, that you mentioned, all these modules that you mentioned? I know that you mentioned it's one-time cost. So how does it exactly work? Uh, yeah, it works on a per-module basis for the initial deployment cost. So uh, basically, if a user uh, decides that they want to create a project with us, uh, they can pick the complexity of it based on how many modules they select. Uh, the most simple project would be a token, for example. For a token, it would probably cost them around $50 to $60 to deploy it with us. And if they decide to add multiple modules to it, so if they want to have token, VX, farms, and launchpad all together, uh, then it would be a higher cost. From our estimations right now, for all like our full suite of products, that we offer, uh, the user could probably deploy it with around $350. Uh, so that would include the uh, various farming customizations, DEX, token, launchpad, and uh, much more. Uh, so for uh, for all of that code, it's quite a fair price considering how uh, how expensive it is to get a development team that, that can take care of these things and how long it would take to develop them as well. Uh, that's uh, basically how the business model is going to work. And then we will work from uh, royalties as well, as I said, and uh, most likely a subscription model to, to combat over generation of contracts 
and uh, some of the hosting problems that we might have in the future if we have too many projects that we are uh, that we are hosting on our own servers. Yeah, I, I'm. I I really like that. I really like like you know a three hundred and fifty dollar price tag. That's that that seems pretty pretty fair and pretty low to me because I just saw a launch pad raise like million dollars to build uh, something and I, i'm i'm sure uh, building with the module might not be as complex or as as good of any ui as uh, someone who is spending million to million dollars but uh, at the core of the functionality it is, like the functionality is going to be there which is uh, the point of building you know your mvp or starting your product and things like that so that is uh, you know really cool uh, to hear from you that you know at 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 you are making such things such protocols available at a very low price. Uh, now I think I think the biggest uh, hurdle in building something like that for me is just thinking of a name or thinking of a good name that would go viral or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Uh, what are some you know what are some of the future developments and uh, future improvements that you are planning with defi builders what are some of the upcoming things that are on the horizon sure uh, right now we're working a lot on uh, improving our uh, base code so uh, some of the um, ai stuff that we did was uh, done for hackathons and we kind of had to do it in a rush in the past so uh, right now to improve everything and make sure that we we have a solid foundation to work with in the future, we've uh, rewritten all of our uh, front-end code and all of our back-end code for, uh, for the AI services so it can be much more improved. Um, as far as the roadmap for uh, some new technical developments, uh, uh, we're hoping around January, February to finish uh, front-end generation for, uh, for the AI services. And uh, in Q2, we hope to finish the marketplace as well for uh, for third-party developers. Uh, another thing that we're uh, working on right now that will be finished in Q1 is uh, the first uh, five modules for our modular builder and uh, connecting the back end to the front end. So we're almost done with that as well. Uh, so yeah, in the next few months, uh, we, we will definitely have a lot of working services that users can take advantage of. and will uh, be going public already from uh, the end of the year right now with the, with the AI services, uh, with some of our partner blockchains. Um, so yeah, that's basically it on the tech side right now. A little bit further down the line, <coughs> we, we would like to start getting into some more uh, complex uh, types of modules. So uh, probably uh, things related to GMX forking, things related to liquid staking, uh, maybe offering uh, different types of uh, DXs to users. So uh, whether they want to go old school pancake Uniswap uh, v2 type of style, or if they want to go for a v3 structure, uh, there's uh, there's definitely a lot of stuff that we can explore there. So uh, we can give uh, more options, not just to the people that want to do their first fundraising project, their first token, uh, but also to the people that are a bit more advanced in DeFi that understand more advanced systems and uh, that want to create them easily. Yeah, thank you so much for, uh, you know, building DeFi Builder uh, for people like me, people like us. Uh, it's a really good product to have and it's it's something that uh, I think makes uh, Web3 uh, much easier to build, much easier uh, for most people, uh, it 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 uh, reduces the barrier of entry that is currently there with so much of uh, uh, so much of new learnings and new thing, uh, you know, no new coding languages and all that stuff, as you said at the beginning of the spaces, and even 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 for developers who already know. Uh, all these coding languages and they have experiences, it, it it greatly reduces the amount of effort that they have to put to build something that is simple. Uh, and, and, and maybe then they can grow from there or something like that. So yeah, thank you so much for joining the spaces today. I just checked, we do not have any questions from the audience. Uh, 
So yeah, thank you so much for joining the spaces today. Uh, we really had a pleasure uh, having you here. We learned a lot from DeFi Builder. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you guys very much as well. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, I shared a little bit of knowledge about a field of Web three that maybe some users are not aware of, but uh, a field that I think will grow a lot in the coming future. Um, a good example of this has definitely been Third Web and uh, how well they have done with the low code solution for developers. Uh, and I think uh, what we're trying to do is the next step. So uh, we can offer a lot more integration for the average user that is not tech based. So I think you'll be hearing a lot more from us in the future and uh, definitely from a lot of competitors as well. There's uh, probably a lot of other clever people in the blockchain that are uh, trying to reach similar goals to us. So I, I think the future is definitely no code. Yeah, I mean, future is definitely no good. Uh, do you want to share, you know, any places or any websites with our community that they can go visit and learn about DeFi Builder or where they can follow you for uh, regular updates or something like that? So, yeah, please uh, feel free to share something like that. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. So, um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can follow us at uh, the DeFi Builder. Uh, if you want to check our website out and get a little bit of an overview of how our services work, uh, you can go to DeFiBuilder.com. And uh, if you would like to test our AI services uh, that are already working on various test nets and on a few main nets right now, uh, you can go on AI.DeFiBuilder.com and uh, play around with it. And please uh, give us some feedback if you do. Uh, we'd love to hear back from you. Uh, and that's about it. Yeah. If you want to reach out to me, I'm Daniel. You can find me on uh, Telegram usually at uh, Nano DeFi. And uh, either way, if anything is needed, uh, you can always reach out to us in DMs on Twitter and uh, we'll get back to you guys and chat about anything that you want. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for joining the spaces. Thank you, everyone. If you are tuning in here or later on YouTube, uh, we will see you next time, probably in next year. Uh, meanwhile, Merry Christmas and very Happy New Year to everyone over here. Uh, goodbye. See you next time. Thank you. Happy holidays, everyone.